Hey everyone, welcome to another HPT Falcon video. I hold in my hand one of the final parts of this bike, but this is not a happy time for me. This part has taken nine weeks to complete, and it's only one of four that need to be finished to make the intermediate gears on my bike. I'm a nice guy, but I can only get pushed so far and this is going to be a little bit of a rant video on all the times that people have wronged me over the course of building this bike and this journey in streamlined bicycle racing. <laughs> I'm only one person and it's pretty hard to make it on your own. Universities have a lot more pull, they've got a lot more power and a lot more money and people tend to do a lot more for universities at a lot faster pace. And having one part take nine weeks to make, um, I'm not happy about. So first of all, I'd like to thank the people that did help me. First one is Innovation Composites, who made the moulds for this bike, so the fairing. So back in 2016, I think it was, when I first designed it, very Nowra, great company, sent the designs away, gave me a good price, high quality moulds. They even spoke to me about how I can reduce the cost of a mould by reducing the flange width. So helping me out by trying their best to let me know the best way to reduce the costs of the build. The second one is TJ Screen Printing and he was the one that made all my HPT Falcon shirts. The guy is an absolute legend. He gets things done within like a week. I, I can just go up to him, hey, I want this many shirts, done. It'll be done in a few days. Great price and awesome bloke. And the third one is McConaughey Boats, just down the road from me. So they're the ones that let me into their workshop to build the carbon fiber part of the fairing. So they gave me one guy with like 20 years experience to help me and guide me along that process. But um, they let me into their workshop to work on my own in a separate private room to build my parts for this bike. And I am eternally grateful for that because it taught me a lot in the week that I was there. I learned heaps. And not many people just let you into their workshop to work as a private person. So first of all, I'd like to thank them. So. Now for the people that have made my life a living hell to deal with with this bike. The first one, I'll, move, I'll just move the camera over here. <coughs> this chainring right here was made by a company called Feather Components. So anyone I shout out in this section, don't go to. They are horrible. Bad customer service, bad quality part. So... Well, in the long run, it turned out good, but I'll tell you the story about how I had to get to that. So, Feather Components, this was one of the first parts I had made back in 2016 or 2017. So, throughout my journey, I've had things being made up until this point where I've finally started building this bike. So, I sent them an email, got a, everything written down. I wanted an 85 tooth chain ring with a 332nd um, pitch, uh, 332nd width on it in a track uh, 140 or whatever a track BCD is. So because I said track BCD, he instantly assumed that I wanted track width. So he didn't read the next line on the email and he sent me the wrong type of width. But I sent him an email and he, didn't reply to me for 350 days and after that 350 days the only reason he replied to my emails is because I chased him up about it I say hey why haven't you done this so then he finishes apart gets it finally finished sends it out to me and it's a wrong pitch it's a 1 8 pitch so then he makes me pay for the shipping to send it back and get it done in the 332nd pitch so all he did was shim a little bit off on the CNC or whatever he did. So 
that was one year of waiting. So the second one was a second and a third um, thing that I am not too happy about. Sorry, second, third, and fourth. So yeah, three things in one hit. When I went to America in 2019 for the World Human Powered Speed Challenge, I took the bike over here. I took this streamliner here that's snugged up. That's snugged up under my CNC. I took that streamliner to America. So because I'm one person and I'm doing it all on my own, I had to organize the flights, the accommodation, the um, travel to and from the airport. I had to build the bike. I had to figure out a way of shipping it to America and I had to figure out a way of shipping it safe. So, <coughs> excuse me. I bought a bike in July, I think it was, June. I think it was June. So in that time I had to finish building the bike, um, take the steel frame out, put my carbon one in it. And because I was flying to America, I was gonna ship it as an oversized luggage like you would do a um, stand up paddleboard. So I needed a bag to be made. So I sent it to Alan Tremaine to get done. So initially I was going to go take sewing lessons, learn how to sew myself and sew my own bag. But when I turned up, and for sewing classes, Alan, who was running the class, is like, yeah, cool, cool, no, nah, that's all right, I can do it for you, no worries. So I was like, oh, sweet, get him to do it, I don't have to stress about it, I let him do it. So I had to, at one stage, I was telling him what, what was going on, so I had to give him the bike so he could physically size up the, the stitching and the zippers and the handles and stuff. And he let that bike sit for a couple of weeks in his lounge room, not doing anything. And in that time, I would sort of start to train, but I couldn't finish a bike and it needed to be done before Battle Mountain, before I flew to America. So after chasing him up multiple times, it was an absolute nightmare trying to get him to actually do some work, but he said he wanted to do. Um, he finally said that it was time that um, he just needed to do the final stitching so I could take a bike back. So I took a bike back and then I started finishing it off. Um, in that time I was getting stickers made. One sticker there that I've ripped off the old bike. And that sticker there Oh, sorry, not that one. That's from Sprocket Rocket. But I had a similar sticker like that with my Australian flag and Adam Hari and everything that I was going to put... that I was going to put on the back half of the bike. So I had like my HPT Falcon sticker, logo, and then like Adam Hari representing Australia. Um, Aussie signs. I went to them. I had everything set out. All the the files ready to go I said here's an easy job for you whenever you're doing a sticker that is the same material as that they wrap cars and they do big signs on shop fronts and stuff I said whenever you're doing that just put mine in on it and cut the corner out and done we'll be happy they forgot about me four times I think it was and after chasing him multiple times I'd go to him and he's like don't know where your files are you never gave it to me and I was like no I gave it to you so then I'd look and I'd be like, oh, it's in this file in like the garbage or whatever. So multiple times I would go back to them and say, where you go? How you going? The fierce, how you going? Oh yeah, yeah, we've been snowed under or whatever. And eventually they got it to me and they didn't charge me anything, which they shouldn't after screwing me around for so long. But that was probably about, oh, I don't know, like, a month and a half, two months of chasing them up like five or six times. Um, so that wasn't nice at all. That was annoying. Um, I had the bag being done at the same time, all while I had to train. 
and organize flights still and like I was still organizing everything and then I had to focus on training and then I had to like have a break before I flew out to America so um, the bag that <laughs> Alan was supposed to have sewn for me he left it till five days before we flew out to America only five days and that was the one key factor. If he hadn't finished a bag, I couldn't ship a bike. I couldn't go to America, as simple as that. So that was quite stressful for me. And <laughs> when we went to fly out, I had a shuttle bus come pick us up from the airport, um, from my house, I mean, and take us to the airport. And when I was inquiring around, like I even asked like limousine companies, my mate owns, <laughs> his step parents own a limousine company, um, parents in law, I mean. Um, and like I even asked, I asked everyone and I emailed this company, I can't remember who it was, shuttle bus company, and I said, this is the dimensions of the bike, can you fit it inside the bus, is there provision to fit it safely, do you have like a storage compartment underneath or something, and they're like, yeah, no worries, it's, it's fine, it'll fit. They rock up on the day and they've got a tiny little... Um, compartment in the boot of this like 15 seater bus and then like a luggage barrier cage and no and we had to put the bike in through the side door of a bus and sit it on top of the headrests of all the seats and hold it there while we drove an hour and a half to the airport and that was stressful enough so I had the shuttle bus the stickers the bag and the stress of finishing the bike in time all into one hit before I went to America. And um, I, <laughs> I wasn't happy, like I wanted to de-stress before I left. Um, and that brings me to the last component, this one. So out of all those things, this has been the worst. This person from real engineering has screwed me around more than all of those people. I went to him initially with my designs. So since doing this and since doing everything else, I've become better at CNC machining, better at designing. So I did everything except write a G code for him. So all he had to do was put it in the computer, do the G code, press go, simple it's like five minutes in the CNC and he said yeah cool that's an easy job we can do that and he's messaged me over the last so that was nine weeks ago um, the first month he never wrote back to me and then I went to him and I was like oh I'm guessing you've finished his parts hadn't finished him hadn't even started him. So I was like, okay, I'd like you to like start from now because this is when I was painting my bike and I'd, I was like, okay, you can do the parts and I'll paint the bike and by the time I've painted it, you should be finished the parts and then I can put them together, bike's done. Um, but that didn't happen. So after four weeks, I messaged him, still nothing. Another two weeks went by and then he started saying that he was getting onto it. Then he started sending me messages going, oh, the parts will be ready to pick up on Thursday. I go in on Thursday. Oh, sorry, we didn't get to it. Ah, uh, it'll be ready Monday. So I go, okay. I go Monday, it's not ready to pick up. Messages me again. Oh, it'll be ready in next Tuesday. Okay, sweet. I go in, not ready yet. Okay, when is it gonna be done? Oh, we're gonna get it to in the CNC on uh, Saturday and on, um, Monday you can come pick it up that's when he did this then two weeks went by which is today and in that time he's messaged me those things saying that he will have it finished on a certain date and he will have it ready for pickup so all that's left is like one shaft and a sleeve and a few keyways that's it it's literally the easiest thing I could do it myself but I want the tolerances to be perfect so I want a professional to do it um, so that was two weeks ago and he still hasn't done it. So today I took the part, what he gave me, 
charge me eight hundred dollars for this one thing, wouldn't give me a receipt for it, and um, I have now chosen to go elsewhere. But I will never use him again. I don't want anyone to use him again. I don't want anyone to use him because he is trash. He sucks. His people skills are horrible. And I just want to let you, everyone, know that doing it on your own is not easy. When you're a university, I'm sure it's it's so easy. Dutch teams get an entire highway shut down for them so they can test their bike. The testing of my bike for 2019 was in America on the qualifying course and my warm up was four squats and then I hopped in the bike and I ended up doing 55 miles per hour that year. So, and that was with only a 500 meter sprint. So I was taking it easy and then 500 meters out, that's the only time I put power down. I wasn't confident. I was scared to crash it because of the amount of effort I put in. So I don't like to rant. Shout out to McConaughey Boats, TJ Screens, Innovation Compass. It's, they're the good guys. They're the ones that helped me, but all the others, I, I couldn't say anything worse. Like They've made my life hell and I just want to forget about it. I just want to finish this bike, start training and look positively into the future and break some world records and do what I love, which is riding these bikes. So um, sorry about the rant and sorry you had to put up with it, <laughs> but um, I need to get out of my chest I need to let everyone know that this type of um, lifestyle is a hard lifestyle. I love what I do, but yeah, sometimes stress gets to you and we're all human. So yeah, I'm looking positive though. I'm putting those people out of my life and focusing on the ones that will help me, which is another company. The guy seems pretty good and he said, he can do it pretty easy, so fingers crossed um, he can deliver. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you realise that um, we are all human and that we should treat each other with respect. So thanks for watching. See you later.